Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where I try to answer some of your questions in particular about South Africa and questions you may have that you didn't know the answer to. Today's question is, how does the South African Reserve Bank print money? To be honest, the answer to that question is relatively simple. The Reserve Bank owns a company called the South African Banknote Company and they print the money at a small factory on Jan van Riebeek Street in Pretoria North. And it's a very unassuming factory in comparison to America's version in Washington DC and Texas, which is really extreme with vaults and all those crazy things. South Africa's factory, very unassuming. Honestly, you wouldn't even know that it was secure. I'll show a picture of it now. The Reserve Bank tells the banknote company how much money to print and they print it. That's the quick answer. But I'll give you a brief history of money printing in South Africa now if you're interested. Before I tell you the history, I just wanted to mention that a lot of people assume that South Africa's currency is linked to gold because of its history, but it's not true. South Africa dropped the gold standard in 1932 and linked the currency to the pound sterling until 1961 where the South African Rand was created. Now let's go back a few years to figure out how money started in South Africa. It started with the Dutch Gilder. In 1652, the first European settlers arrived on South African shores and brought along their, current, their country's currency. A Dutch explorer who everybody knows of, Jan van Riebeek, created a trading station on behalf of the Dutch East India Company. This trading station later be no, became known as Cape Town, as we all know. Netherlands' official currency, the Dutch Gilder, became the official currency that was used in Cape Town by ships and mariners and traders as they came through Cape Town they used the Dutch Gilder. In 1782, quite a bit after that, the first paper money was brought to Cape Town. This was the Rix dollar and the Stiver denominations and these were the issued paper currency in Cape Town. The first notes are actually handwritten surprisingly. These notes included a government fiscal hand stamp indicating the date of its issue and the value of that note. So it was just a piece of paper stamped and said this is X amount of money. The Dutch East India Company went bankrupt in the late 18th century so that's a bit awkward. Great Britain then took control of the region and declared it a British colony in 1806. They then introduced their currency which lasted until 1826. At that time sterling coinage became the sole legal tender and various foreign currencies were not actually allowed to co-circulate in South Africa. After that, the Burgers Pond was issued during 1874, which bore the portrait of Thomas Francois Berger, South Africa's first president. After the discovery of gold, South Africa built a mint in Pretoria and began issuing coins depicting Paul Kruger. These coins issued between 1892 and 1902, were still based on the British pound sterling. The minting of South African coins was halted in 1902 as the Second Anglo-Boer War had begun. The production of South African coins by Pretoria's Royal Mint began again in 1923 and continued until 1931. That was when the gold standard was dropped in South Africa. South Africa continued using the British coin system until 1961 when South Africa gained independence and became their own republic. The South African Banknote Company was then established in 1958 as a result of a decision by the South African government to print their own South African local currency. The South African Reserve Bank formed a joint venture with Bradbury, Wilkinson and Company and commenced production from a factory in Pretoria. Bradbury, Wilkinson and Company's shareholding was eventually taken over by the South African Reserve Bank. So the South African Reserve Bank owns the South African Banknote Company. This was the beginning of the South African Rand, which takes its name from the Witzwaterstrand, where gold was discovered. On 14 February 1961, the Rand replaced the pound. Rand denominations issued were the one Rand, these were notes by the way, paper notes, one Rand note, two Rand note, 10 Rand and 20 Rand. They were signed by Governor Rissick and remained active until 1967. So that was the first issuance of South African Rand notes. The second issue of South African bank notes was from 1966 to 1977 and it had Jan van Riebeek on it, all the notes, as well as Protea, the national flower. There were two variations of a one Rand note 
two rand note, five rand note, and a 10 rand note. The third issue of South African currency was from 1978 to 1991. They also had Jan van Riebeek on it and Proteas, but the amounts were more. They added a 20 rand note and a 50 rand note and they canceled the one rand note. The fourth issue of South African currency was from 1992 to 1993, so just one year. And this was when they introduced the big five to the notes. They had the 10 rand note, 20 rand note, 50 rand note, they added 100 rand note and the 200 rand note. The fifth issue of South African notes was in 1994 when South Africa gained independence from the apartheid government and was used up until 2011. These notes still had the big five, but they also included multiple different South African languages. The sixth issue of South African notes was in 2012, up until 2018. And these are when they introduced the Nelson Mandela notes. So there was a picture of Nelson Mandela on the front, but they kept the big five animals on the reverse side of the note. In 2018, there was a special seventh edition of the South African notes. And these were a special Nelson Mandela centenary note where there was Nelson Mandela on the front and on the reverse, there's a young Mandela in various places of importance, such as his home in Mveso or his home in Soweto as well as Mandela at the Union Buildings. So these were a centenary commemoration note. The eighth and last issue that's currently in circulation started in 2023, which was last year, uh, May 2023. And it has Mandela on the front as per the other ones and the big five on the reverse. But the difference is that the big five have young animals with them. So changed slightly as well as a lot of new security features, new updates, lots of different wording as well. The interesting thing about South African currency is all of the notes issued from 1961 within the South African Republic uh, remain legal tender. So if you found a note from 1961, you could spend it, um, but it retains its legal face value. So if it said one Rand note, it would be still worth one Rand in today's times. So I'll probably keep it and frame it if I found on old money, but you could actually still use them today. So nothing goes out of print or out of use. The actual money is made by a process of printing, cutting and assembly. First, the paper is printed with the image of the South African coat of arms. Then the paper is cut into the individual note sizes and different notes have different sizes. So that's pretty interesting. And then they're assembled into bundles. The final step is then to add all the security features such as the security strip, which is on the back of the note. Bank notes have to be tough. They have to be able to cope with lots of pressures, people accidentally putting them in the wash, uh, people throwing them, using them, almost trying to rip them. So they made quite strong. What is quite interesting is they actually do tests on the notes to make sure that they can withstand various detergents if someone were to put it in the washing machine. So if there's a new OMO that comes out, they test the money to make sure it can still stand against that. Notes are then also put through folding and crumple tests, which include crumpling a note and repeatedly hitting it with a hammer until it falls apart to make sure that the notes are of a good sturdy quality because people are rough with money, let's be honest. A bank note's lifespan or life expectancy is related to its face value. So a 200 note could last for many years, whereas a 10 Rand note is probably only gonna last for about three months. So if you've noticed a 10 Rand note, it's very papery, it's much more easy to break, but a 200, 200 Rand note could last for a really long time. It's really good quality. There is an obsession with security at the South African Banknote Company, and they haven't had a lot of losses or thefts from the plant, which I find pretty cool. Notes and paper, the raw paper, are constantly counted in and out of each stage of the production process, and often in the middle as well. And if the counts don't tally up, they close the gates and say, yay, no one's leaving the plant until we manage to figure out where the money has gone, or the paper to print the money. So for example, if South African banknote company orders 1 million sheets of paper, that's the exact number of cash money that is produced on the end of the whole process. At the end of the production, the company has to produce certificates of balance, which show exactly what paper was used where and what happened to any of the leftovers, if there are leftovers. Interestingly enough, the paper that we use for our banknotes comes from Europe, but it's specially made for our South African currency. It arrives in the country containing different security fibers, metallic thread, and watermarks. The paper is actually made of cotton rather than wood, 
as normal paper because this gives it increased durability and strength as well as it's a security feature because it's a lot more difficult for somebody to find cotton paper than wood paper. What's also interesting is that most of the inks used on banknotes, especially the exotic, fluorescent and invisible inks are also imported. So South Africa imports a lot of the resources they need to make the notes, but they do actually print them in South Africa. And that is the process of printing money in South Africa. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you learned something. Uh, pop in the comments what you thought, if you have any questions or concerns, and I will get to those. Also, if you have any ideas of videos you would like me to make, I will make sure to do that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.